Welcome back again. This is Fox, the next instalment with our Anno 1800 playthrough. I'm just going to give you a little update on Mbessa, my thoughts to uh, what we're going to do with Mbessa and how it's changed from last time we spoke about Mbessa. So yeah, this is what I've got going here. This is the first fully populated island that I've done in Mbessa. Um, it's all elders, apart from the... Uh, you can see over here there's a few... What's the first here called? I forget. Shepherds. So on this island, bearing in mind I've got full town hall coverage. Or near as damn it, if I can find a town hall. Cool, they blend in well. That's a trade union. Trade union. Town hall. So I've got good town hall coverage over the island. Got some production fitted in amongst the gaps. The main reason, the sole purpose of these islands now in Embassy is going to be for making me cotton. You can see these ones are woodcutters spread out over the island. These are all clipped. If you don't know what clipped is by now watching my channel, then you should do. This means that every single one of these ones are woodcutters is being affected by two trade unions. I'm using Ursula Green, plus 50% productivity, increases the forest density. Mr. Rodriguez, 40% productivity, gives us cotton at a rate of one over four. Now, because each of these is being clipped by two trade unions, each with a Miss Re Ro 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 Rodriguez in, it's almost like getting a cotton every half cycle or every other cycle. Then using the Teutonic Technical Secateurs, this is another 40% boost and another 30% forest density. This means that when these ones of woodcutters are clipped by two trade unions with these items, they only need like, I believe it's one tile to make maximum efficiency. Now, the way my sitters have worked out, they've generally got about 10 tiles. I mean, this one's got a lot less, you can see. This one's got three, maybe seven tiles. This one's got two by three. This one's got six. So yes, first to say, they don't need that much cultivational area to reach maximum efficiency. You can see we get them up to 350-ish percent, I believe. It may even be more. 360, this one is at almost. This one's at 359. 358. I think it's 360% flat out. So clipping these ones a woodcutter ones of woodcutters in and amongst the population uses very little space. You can see the trade union is virtually the same footprint as a house. It's four by four, a house is three by three. The ones of woodcutters are four by four, whereas a house is three by three. So with two trade unions and two trade unions, well, you can see one trade union can affect four if they're positioned right, but two ones of cutters and wood, one trade union are taking up the space of about six houses. So. It's really a really, really good way of generating cotton without actually having cotton fields in the new world, which we do not have any space for. So just for a quick glimpse, this island, you can see with these 25 ones of woodcutters all clipped, taking up very little space, is making me 180 tons of cotton. I believe I only need something like 550 globally. So three large islands like this with the ones of woodcutters clipped throughout are going to make me enough cotton for everything that we need that means the rest of Embassa can be all population i'm aiming for 300,000 elders it's probably going to end up being 250 by the time i'm done but a quarter of a million people is a good push towards the 8 million global population that i'm aiming for so why have i decided to do this whereas before in the last video the whole of Embassa was going to be Like this, goat's milk making ethanol. Now, it's a lot, a lot of work to make a little bit of ethanol, these are. You can see I'm making 460 tons of goat's milk a minute, and it's only making me 85 tons of ethanol a minute. It uses a massive amount of space. I mean, space wasn't really an issue because Embessel was free land for me, but... You may have seen in the last video or the video before... I made a giant ethanol island in the new world, making me 600 tons a minute. 600 tons a minute from one island in the new world. This was worth the, worth the sacrifice of using an island in the world in the new world to do this. Um, yeah, after doing this, I thought, hang on a minute, 
I'm not going to need any of the islands in Mbessa for making the FNL because this is making me 610 tons a minute. I need 936, I believe, globally. My cognac island. This is about a fifth up and running. This is making me 30 tons a minute. So this will be making me 150 tons a minute. That gets me up to 760 tons a minute. I only then need another 200 tons of ethanol to reach my global target. Now, I will say quickly, there's one island over here that will be staying. That's this one, purely for the goat's milk that all of the elders are going to need. Now, this tiny island is making me 43 tons a minute. That means that now, quick maths again, I need 160 tons of ethanol to reach my global target. Now, I could leave two islands over there doing it, but I've got these three little clusters of schnapps distilleries on... Crown Falls making me 172 tons a minute so the ethanol's done from what I've got from from the island I've got in the new world plus the ethanol that's going to be made from the cognac distilleries as a byproduct uh, this is utilizing this book as well the get quick rich volume for the wasteland and the schnapps distilleries that I've got on Crown Falls ethanol's done so we no longer need ethanol we no longer need to produce ethanol in Mbessa, so that means we can use it all for all for population. When working with max population, working towards max population save, it's a good idea to do that, mainly because I believe I'm right in saying you can get more population per tile out of Mbessa than you can the New World. I mean, the New World was going to be full anyway. We were going to... If I didn't use that island to make ethanol, it was going to be used to fill with bananas and make grapes for the cognac. So the new world was a write-off anyway. So if we can use all of Mbessa for population, then so be it. So how are we going to go about that? I thought about having one island. I thought about making one island as a hub to make all of the products that we need to feed the elders. But from my experience in my last playthrough, my scholar run through, um, the loading piers in Ambassador and New World do not deal well with a lot of traffic. You can see these are at these are advanced piers. These are not yet boosted by a Harbour Master's office. They should be. I've got them in place. But the fastest you can get a pier up to out here in Ambassa is this one's yet to be boosted as well. This one is. You can get it up to 5.2 tons a second. Now, put that in perspective, I've got about 500 tons worth of goods I've got to make a minute for all of these elders. That's cutting aside the ones that we can trade for. Having all of the ships from all the islands come, come into one hub and then taking all the stuff away, it would have just been a massive traffic jam. It just would not have worked. So, I've decided to make one or two products per island. This first island is making me the finery or... Yeah, the finery. The linen is being traded for in the old world and shipped over, but I'll talk about that in a minute. It's also going to be a hub for stew. The stew is being traded. That is getting sent over here from the old world, and then it's going to be shipped around. So this island is going to be used for distributing the finery and the fish stew. I've already created a little island over here making me the dried meat. The um, salt is being made in various places and sent over here, I believe... We have got to do a lot more of that. I thought I'd done the salt. Bear with me. Salt. Uh, we're only making 32 tons. The demand is 160. I'm only making 32 tons. So there's a lot more salt to be made. But we do have a lot of coastline about the place. It's not going to be too much of an issue to make the salt. You can see I've allocated some coastline over here to making salt. We're going to be able to boost it quite substantially. We can get them up to 150 to 60, 275 percent, I think. This island's making me 21 tons, so most of the coastline dotted about the place is going to be used for making salt. This over here, we use for making salt. So yeah, this one is going to be for the dried meat. As I say, it's all in place. The cows are being traded for again and shipped over. This island that I've just started building up is going to be making me ceramics. 
The clay is being transported over the indigo I'm making on the island. All we then need to deal with is uh, illuminated script and lanterns. Now, illuminated script is a bit of a pain because it needs paper, which uses the uh, river slots. But because all of these islands are going to be population, you can see most of the river slots are free and not being needed for nothing. This one's a water pump. This is literally just feeding a fire station. Fire chances low. I could probably do away with that and just deal with fires when they come. This one is making me paper. So we are going to need to ship in some wood from the old world to make the paper, but the amount of river slots we've got for it, it's not going to be an issue. The next one is lanterns. This uses glass and chandlers to make the candles. Now the apiary or the beeswax we can make we can trade for this so this will be sent from the old world also with the glass so I'm gonna need an island just with chandlers and lantern smiths on it so it's peasy squeezy lemon easy but we'll spread that around we'll have the illuminated scripts on one island and the lanterns on another island and then we'll just have ships phoning around to all the different islands it will make it a lot easier ships picking up from multiple islands or islands dedicated to only making one good and then obviously cramming loads on one island and having to deal with 20 ships 20 or 30 ships trying to load and unload at these really slow piers so yeah that's the plan for Embessa we'll quickly have a look at the islands in the old world that I am using to trade for the goods I've got two islands here at the minute this one this is dedicated to trading me goods for Embessa the corn and the wood don't worry about that's going to the new world for my Ethanol. Oh, what am I doing? Um, on this island, I'm trading for seafood stew. Clay pipes are needed for one of the specialists that I'm putting in the town halls to give me bonus residence. So this is a luxury, but because we can trade for it, it's not really a bother. It's just bicycles, which I'm making a lot of on Crown Falls. The linen we are trading for, which goes to make the finery. Sanger cows, which are going to make the dried meat. So that's some of the items we're trading for. Then got this one. This is my Cherry Island Embessa 2, the second island trading for Embessa goods. This is trading me for the glass, the beeswax, the wood, and the corn again are going to the, old, the uh, New World for the ethanol. The grain and the tallow is going to the Cape to make me more biscuits. The clay is going over there to make the ceramics. So the only thing really that I'm not trading for at the minute for Embessa will be the wood, but for the illuminated for the illuminated scripts I forget the name of them I think there is an item that allows you to use ones of wood what is the name of the building that produced the illumina so I think there is an item I think I think there is an item that enables you to use wood, to use ones of wood. I may be wrong. So this one affects productivity, gives us illuminated scripts and lanterns as a byproduct. This one plus 40 negative workforce. This one plus 35. I thought there was one that allowed to change the inputs. Either way, it's not a problem. If we've got to use wood, so be it. We will just tr trade for it and ship it out. It's not going to be an awful lot. It's only going to be 100 tons a minute or something. Yeah. I'm thinking, as always. This one affects Lumina. Produces the workforce. The rest are just generic ones. So, yeah, I mean, we'll... We'll trade for the wood, ship it out, no problem. And that is the plan for Embessa. Ceramics are done, dried meat's done, fish stew is taken care of, finery is done. Uh, it's literally illuminated scripts and lanterns that we've got to deal with. Clipping the um, ones of woodcutters throughout the islands to make me the cotton, to, which will then be shipped over to the New World for the ethanol. Yeah, good. 
nice and easy. Next episode, I'll talk about. I may go over an island that I've just done in the new world. I've created a super celluloid boss. I've called it. I've created a super celluloid island. This needs cotton that we have over in Ambassa, but this is going to be making me 320 tons of celluloid a minute. Big boss, final boss celluloid island. With this and celluloid 2, which is making me 126, that is all we need, so I can delete celluloid 1. It's going to be used for bananas. Oh, I've got to make a little bit of chewing gum, so we'll have to deal with that at some point. But yeah, for now, that's it. That was the update for Mbessa. Uh, in a nutshell, we're not going to be making ethanol there anymore. We're going to be clipping ones of woodcutters to make the cotton for the celluloid. Easy peasy. Now, if you enjoyed this, please give it a thumbs up. Subscribe if you haven't already. Click the bell for notifications. There is a link in the description to my Twitch channel. I am still waiting for a final date to move, but... As soon as we're moved and I'm settled in and got everything rebuilt, I will start streaming on Twitch. But for now, as always, thanks for watching and uh, we'll see you in the next one. Cheers.